his teammate to make sure he's okay. And as you know by now, things had a happy ending. Park was fine in the car, just trying to find a way to get out. And the work continues on the guardrail. Now the delay to repair the guardrail was probably something we didn't need in terms of the weather. While he's not a meteorologist, he'd like to play one on TV right now. <laughs> Here's Dave Burns. Well, and at least there are a lot of friendly people around here. Nearly every team has visited this spot. This is where NASCAR has the weather radar up for the teams to see. Let me show you what we think we know. This gets updated about every 15 minutes or so. Here's Pocono International Raceway right about there. This system has moved across most of the morning but started to come down just a while ago. This severe stuff over here moved straight down and seems to have stalled. So we hope that it's not moving this way. And then we heard a rumor that the winds have moved to a northerly blowing uh, direction there. But uh, we don't know that that's true. So best guess is the storm has been kind of moving this way. We're kind of in a line to get some of it. But at the moment, it is still dry here. Hey, Dave. Yes, but, uh, yes Wally. What kind of ice cream was that? Every single crew member that's come through here has been eating a popsicle or something ice cream, and I haven't gotten anything. They oh, just gave yeah, me a okay. stick. Uh, ask, okay. ask, yeah. ask Frank when he's going to send some of those up here to the booth for us. And when are you sending some up to Alan and Benny? He's <laughs> <laughs> hard enough to deserve an ice cream. Oh, but I have. <laughs> he's hard enough to understand when his mouth is not full, right? Yeah, yeah. But they said thanks a lot, by the way. Anyway, so that's what's going on down here with the weather, and uh, I'll find something to fill this with. Okay. Oh, that ice cream looks good. It did look good. Yep. Mike's working his way back up to race control. Now, uh, he's President got, Mike Helton. Now, now watch, though. He's going to have to get through the autographs. I saw him come up earlier, and he was he was playing Elvis, buddy. <laughs> he was signing autographs. <laughs> Elvis is trying to rise to the stage. <laughs> They're not messing with him now. Well, if he's coming up here, that means the repairs are just about done, and we can get back racing shortly. The Pennsylvania 500, presented by Pep Boys on TNT, is brought to you by Rocky Mountain Cold Coors Light. Cold, down, easy. By Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Burn fat, crush cravings, and supercharge your energy. By Mobile One. The more you know about new Mobile One, the better it is for your car. Nothing outperforms new Mobile One. And by Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. College football is coming up very soon. In fact, coverage starts Saturday, September 14th at 7 o'clock Eastern Time on Superstation TBS. What kind of football is that? Real soon. I'm going to start watching that. TBS. That's that six weeks, soon. isn't it? Well, be here before you know it. The Brickyard 400 now, that's real soon. Got big, next week. Big 12, Pac-10 football. Oh. Come on, you're on top of this stuff. Pac-10, huh? Yeah. What's that mean? That's the guys on the West Coast, huh? Yeah. Ah. Okay. UCLA Bruins and the Stanford Cardinal and California Golden Bears. But the Oregon Beavers will wipe all of them out. There you go. Are you making all that up? No. Oh. Just about finished fixing that guardrail. We should be able to get the Pennsylvania 500 back underway shortly. Who will come back. Don't go to sleep, Jeff. There's activity here at Pocono Raceway, and it's of the good kind. Drivers have just been called back to their cars, and we will get the Pennsylvania 500 started up again in just a couple of minutes. Hey, you know what we didn't do because of the, the rain rush up on the, the uh, countdown to green? A lot of things. We didn't give out the Golden Benny. Oh, that's right. But we've got time to do it right now. Let's go to Benny in the pits. All right, last week we saw Ward Burton go to victory in New Loudon, New Hampshire. The guy that made that decision, Tommy Baldwin. Tommy, congratulations. Thanks, Benny. I wish uh, you were out here so we could jump you and steal this from you, but uh, <laughs> thanks for the award. Uh, guys did a great job last week uh, to get us in victory lane, and it, uh, we're proud to get this uh, trophy from you. Hey. A little bit excited last week, wasn't you? Just a little bit. Uh, a lot of hard work goes into these things, and uh, see all them guys with the big smiles on their face with all the hard work uh, definitely pays off, and uh, get to go a little crazy every now and then. Hey, Tommy, some guys asked me down there if there's any money goes with this award, and I said some things are priceless. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> and and yeah, speechless, too, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll deal with that on the golf course maybe one day, but uh, thanks, Benny. I appreciate it, man. Hey, congratulations, Tommy. Great run, great run last week. Thank you very much. Tommy Baldwin, winner of the Golden Benny from New Hampshire, who will win the Treasured and Prized Award next week. 
Find out on Discover Card Countdown to Green from Indianapolis. You know, maybe the Oregon Beavers can get that one day. <laughs> I know. I've uh, been told on my headset, it's not the Beavers, huh? It's yep. the Ducks. Oh, well, isn't one of those Oregon teams the Beavers? No? Okay, let's don't go there. It's the Oregon Ducks. Oregon, Oregon Ducks. Ducks. Okay. To all the folks so, down the Northwest, I apologize. What have we learned? Benny will not be the color commentator for the, <laughs> for the Pac-12 <laughs> the Pac <-10 laughs> the Pac football <laughs> games. Yeah. All right. <laughs> put, put. All right, let's go to Marty. Thank you, Alan. And uh, for those of the, you who missed the Countdown to Green show, I am sorry. First of all, you started the race a lap down, but you missed Rusty Wallace playing golf. So here's a second helping and a different twist on Ford No Boundaries. Instead of Ford No Boundaries, it's probably going to be Ford Out of Boundaries in this one. <laughs> Out of, that went out of bounds twice. <laughs> Did you see that? See it anywhere? I have no I think it's out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Jeez, dude. You want to look for it? I'll look yeah, for it. Alright, good enough. You know, I can't find it anywhere, Rusty. Just a couple of green snake bites, you know, no problem there. And I didn't mind going in the woods because, I, Wally, I'm used to looking for your ball in the woods. That's where your ball always goes, you know. What you didn't see was, was Rusty throwing a ball at me, so I would think it was a snake. That's what you missed. But uh, I'm used to being in the woods looking for your ball and Alan's too most times. Well, bl believe me, I've been in the woods plenty, and the foot wedge works just nicely <laughs> when that happens. I've seen your foot wedge. It can go a long way, can it, Wally? No boundaries on that, and when Wally golfs, there's no rules either. No, there isn't. All right, we're about set to get this thing back going again. Let's put you back inside the driver's seat here, Mr. Dahlenbach. You've had to sit down for the better part of an hour now. You're all juiced up and ready to go for the start of the race. Well, then you had to kind of take a nap. Yeah, m most of the time uh, when we restart these races like that, everybody's a little bit more careful, and it's probably a little bit better start because everybody realizes just what happened. So we'll probably see a little bit more give and take on the restarts after you have a situation like this. It's amazing. In Daytona Beach each year, they run qualifying races on Thursday. If you have a huge crash in the first one, the second one is almost always caution free. If the first one is caution free, almost always you have a big crash in the second one. So yeah, these guys have seen these cars torn up on the backstretch and there will be a lot more give and take when this race restarts. We showed you the weather radar a little while ago. There is some weather that may threaten the area sometime later in the day, so that's on the minds of all the drivers and crew chiefs as they get set to go, meaning lap 100, halfway point of this race, may take on a little more importance as we roll on. Ricky Rudd is the leader. Pet Boys presents the Pennsylvania 500 on TNT. Waiting on the command to refire engines and resume the Pennsylvania 500 presented by Pep Boys here at Pocono Raceway. Been under the red flag for about an hour after a lap one crash just off turn one. And Rusty Wallace and Steve Park got together, sending Park and Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s cars into that inside guardrail, destroying about a, what, 30, 40 foot section of it. And they've been working to replace that over inside the corners since then. Here's another look at the crash. Steve Park trying to go by Rusty Wallace. Rusty comes up, they make contact. Ricky Craven gets in the back of Steve Park and turns him left. Dale Earnhardt right in the path of Dale Earnhardt Jr. And like a bulldozer, here they go for the guardrail. The guardrail gives and watches that car just goes right through it. The entire width of the car through the guardrail, but it does throw it back inside the track, up and over. And finally we'll do another half spin and stop on its side. And after some difficulties getting extricated from the safety equipment inside the cockpit, Steve Park did climb from the machine and he is fine. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is fine. And the cars of uh, Earnhardt Jr. Park and Rusty Wallace are now back in the garage area. Check with Bill Weber. Well, thank you, Alan. We just handed out the Golden Benny to the 22 crew of Tommy Baldwin and company for winning last week in Loud, New Hampshire. Want to take just a second to flash back to that event. 
a race that left cars crumbled and drivers complaining. In the garage here at Pocono, several teams told me they pulled, among other things, pavement, stones, and rubber out from underneath the car body after the race. I spoke to track owner Bob Bear on the telephone on Wednesday. He said he plans to roll the track with heavy equipment and then just let the track sit. That would allow the pavement that was put down three to four weeks before the New England 300 to fully set and hopefully not have any problems when we go back there in September. Earlier today, I spoke to Winston Cup Series director John Darby about what happened and what's ahead. I think going in there to September, um, I know how, how uh, focused and, and adamant Bob Bear is about having a good racetrack for our competitors to race on. I'm sure he's already got engineers and asphalt people lined up probably all the way around the track looking at it um, to make the necessary repairs on turns three and four, and, and then we can really see the benefit of what, what the change up there was. And you're confident that we will have a good race when we go back to New Hampshire in September? Oh, absolutely. And Mr. Bear is very confident of that as well. So we'll see what happens when we go back to the New Hampshire International Speedway. Meanwhile, in that race, Dale Jarrett finished third. In post-race inspection, the car was found to be one-eighth of an inch too low. Jarrett was fined 25 driver points. The team was fined 25 owner points. And crew chief Todd Parrott was fined $20,000. The comment from Todd Parrott, from Todd Parrott rather, is an official no comment. As for Dale Jarrett, he said his stance on post-race inspection hasn't, sent, hasn't changed since we talked to him a few weeks ago. I think there's got to be zero tolerance. I, our sport is to that point that, that we have to, to be that strict because it is so difficult to win these races uh, that people, I believe, are willing to, to take that chance uh, and say, you know, let's pay our $25,000 fine because we need to win. And the buzz around the garage area this weekend? what happens to the next guy that is one eighth of an inch too low and that eighth has been pretty expensive to some, to some teams in the winston cup series this season alan bill thanks and of course the taking of points something that we've just seen in the last couple of punishments that have been handed out that has gotten some people's attention because you don't know how valuable those 25 points can be when the year is over if it's a difference between first and second in nascar winston cup point standings it could be millions if it's a difference in 18th and 19th, it's still a few thousand dollars. They're getting ready to roll the field off and try and resume the Pennsylvania 500. So let's take a break here. Hopefully the resumption of this race is just around the corner. One weekend, two stars, three chances to see the Thomas Crown Affair. Do you really think I'm going to sleep with the man I'm investigating? One last chance to see the Thomas Crown Affair, tonight at 8 on TNT. And at Pocono Raceway, the field is rolling off the pit lane, getting ready to resume the Pennsylvania 500 after a one-hour and five-minute red flag to make repairs to the guardrail inside turns one and two. NASCAR President Mike Helton has stepped over into the booth to join us. Mike, you went out there and surveyed the scene a little while ago. Tell us, it was pretty extensive, the damage over there. Yeah, it took out probably about 100 feet of guardrail on the backstretch back there, and it, the guardrail was important to protect the infield area from the, the race cars, which it served its purpose earlier today. We need to make sure it stayed that way. We, we talked ahead. about Steve and the guardrail gave and probably helped his injury situation, but when you come back here next year, you think that wall will still be metal or going to concrete wall? Well, I think, you know, George Ewald and the crew from Pocono back there and did a great job putting everything back together. And I think that, uh, that Doc and uh, Joe or George will take a look at maybe making that a little bit stronger, a little bit taller. But uh, it served its purpose today. It took us a while to get it back together, but we're ready to go again. This is one of the situations, though, why you talk about guardrails and the study of safe walls, soft walls as they're called, needs to be extensively done. You've been pretty adamant about being